Hi, I'm Sonia. Hello, everybody. I'm Logan. And we're your motor control experts. Today, we will be explaining John Teal's two-dimensional taxonomy in three levels of difficulty through the examples of firefighters for a grade five level, hockey players for the grade nine level, and driving for first year university. For our first explanation, we're going to use firefighters. Now, firefighters are kind of like superheroes, right? They save people from burning houses or burning buildings. Now, they have a very complex job, but we're going to break this down to you using John Teal's taxonomy in two dimensions. Examples of intertrial variability that we see on a firefighter workforce is using fire extinguishers. So the pressures of a fire extinguisher decrease the more we use them, which makes every attempt of the, tri of the trial when we're performing a task different. And that is an example of present intertrial variability, whereas absent intertrial variability can be an example of the amount of water coming out of a fire hydrant because the firefighters need consistent pressure in order to put out fires using the water from the hydrant. Now we're going to look into regulatory conditions when firefighting. Now, when you're a firefighter, it's super important that you are totally aware of your surroundings. And this is because surroundings around you are always changing, especially with fire. Fire can cause damages to the structures around you, which can initially make obstacles that you need to avoid so that you don't get hurt. Or other people to get hurt, for the matter of fact. So it can cause spatial and temporal barriers that you need to avoid when performing a task, or in this case, when the firefighter is putting out the fire and rescuing other people. When we look at body orientation, we're talking about whether we're staying still or moving and how we move from place to place. If a firefighter rushes into a burning building and sees someone unconscious on the floor, that person isn't moving, so they're experiencing body stability. Using our energy to move ourselves from place to place is what we call active transport. A firefighter's job is really hard because they have to move around from place to place all the time, either to bring someone out of a burning building or extinguish it. Because of that, during most of their job, they'll be in active transport. Things we don't need our energy for is what we call passive transport. A fireman sliding down a fire pole on his way to an emergency would be passive transport because they're not using energy to slide down the pole they're just coming down anyways when we're looking at object manipulation we're talking about how many different objects do we have to move around to accomplish what we want to do in the case of a firefighter an example would be bringing someone unconscious out of a burning building or even just moving pieces of a building so that we can get out of it. Either way, a firefighter's job gets a lot harder the more objects they have to move. Firefighters are real life superheroes because they are very good at performing hard tasks to help people in danger. Knowing all the different parts that change their skills can help them save more lives. Next, we're gonna use hockey. Hopefully something you all know a little bit about to help explain John Teal's taxonomy in two dimensions, starting with intertrial variability. Now, what we remember from early on within the video about intertrial variability can either be present or absent. For the most part, it's always present. And given with our hockey analogy, we can look at present intertrial variability with the opponents in the rink, their positioning, as well as the competition level of the other team because this will make every attempt of the task different. Now for absent intertrial variability, uh, usually the conditions of the ice won't necessarily change, and that's because they're both maintained by a Zamboni, as well as kept at a specific temperature. So you don't really have to worry about the root conditions affecting the ability of for you to do a task. For the last environmental context, we're gonna look at the regulatory conditions for hockey. Now, you can have regulatory conditions, so that's specifically the conditions that are changing in the environment. Now, you don't see this a lot in indoor hockey, but when you play on an outdoor rink, 
you can see this with the different weather conditions, like when it's raining or when it's snowing or if it's really light out or if it's super dark. And then for non-regulatory conditions, we can see the indoor rink. So these are the conditions that aren't changing. So specifically, like we touched on earlier in intertrial variability, um, the ice rinks are maintained by a Zamboni, as well as kept at a specific temperature. So they are always the same. When we look at body orientation, we're thinking about how we can get from point A to point B. We can do this in one of two ways. We can do this through active transport or passive transport. In hockey, active transport would be when you're skating from one place to another because you're using your energy to do so. On the other hand, if Johnny the hockey player decided to impress his crush and ended up hitting the boards and spraining his ankle, he would be transported off the ice in a stretcher passively. We can also use body orientation to describe whether we're moving or standing still. Moving is called body transport, and we already talked about those two examples with active and passive transport. Staying still, on the other hand, is called body stability, and an example of that would be Johnny lying on his stretcher, because he probably wouldn't be moving. Chantil's taxonomy is a way to keep score of task complexity, which ultimately helps you improve the way that you perform a task by evaluating the task at different stages. Now we're going to go into our last topic for today, which is driving. We're going to use the John Teal's taxonomy in two dimensions to explain driving and the complexities of driving, starting with intertrial variability. Driving. So firstly, environmental conditions, like if it's raining or if it's snowing or if it's night or if it's day, will affect the way that we drive, or initially each trial, because I, each trial, depending on the conditions, can make us more cautious. Now, things that won't necessarily change our driving or at each trial is the road rules, because the road rules are strict. You need to follow them every single time that you're out there on the road, which makes them absent into trial variability. Now we're going to talk about regulatory conditions when driving. Now, environmental conditions can influence spatial and temporal aspects of our movement. Now, for example, uh, the amount of traffic on a road can influence the way or how fast we drive. We will drive more cautiously and probably a little bit more slowly, which is an example of regulatory conditions. Non-regulatory conditions, for example, can be the colors of those cars on the highway or on the road. They do not influence the way that we drive. When we're looking at body orientation, we're talking about whether we're staying still or moving and how we move from place to place. If we're staying still, that's called body stability. An example in my car would be taking a nice long nap after a really boring class. There's also body transport, and there's two types of body transport, active and passive. Active body transport is when I get from place to place using my energy, and passive when I don't have to use any at all. As a driver in a moving car, I'm always in passive transport. The car is moving, but I don't have to do any work. If I decided to drink three cups of energy drink and push my car on the way to school, that would be active transport. When we look at object manipulation, we're talking about whether we have to maintain or change a position of an object, in this case being my car. When we drive, there's a lot of different objects we have to manipulate in order to get the car moving the way we want it to. This could include changing gears, moving my wheel, turning on the windshield wipers, or even playing my favorite song. Driving just gets harder as we incorporate more and more of these objects that we have to consciously manipulate. Another example of this would be me driving with a trailer. When we have a trailer attached to our car, we have to move our car in different ways, move the steering wheel a different way, for example, in order to get it moving the way we want it to. Chantil's taxonomy in two dimensions demonstrates that various components contribute to task complexity and ultimately influence performance changes. Thank you for watching our video explanation of Chantil's taxonomy in two dimensions. These are your motor control experts, over and out.